Hey, this is Paul with MakeUseOf.com, and today we're looking at the Autel Evo Nano Plus. When it was first released in January 2022, the Autel Evo Nano and Nano Plus shook the prosumer drone category by introducing the first semi-professional sub 250 gram drone. And when compared to the popular DJI Mini 2 that came out the previous year, the Nano Plus manages to fit a significantly larger camera sensor and the inclusion of obstacle avoidance sensors, which allows it to take better photos and videos and lets users operate it more safely. The Evo Nano is slightly cheaper than the Nano Plus, as it doesn't have as impressive of a camera, but it still is a significant upgrade over the DJI Mini 2 in many ways. And so the Evo Nano Plus is an appealing choice for users who want a very compact drone that's still very capable. And as I'll share throughout this review, one of its biggest strengths is actually with its low light quality. As I give you a few side-by-side -side comparisons to the DJI Mini 3, this really blew it out of the water. But aside from that, it's not a complete home run for Autel because while these two share similar specs, DJI still manages to have better software. And so if you're someone who primarily relies on some of its smart features, Autel still has a little bit of catching up to do. And let's clear a little bit of confusion out of the way because there's the Nano and then there's the Nano Plus. They look identical, but again, the difference is with the camera. The Nano Plus starts at 949 while the Nano starts at 799. For $150, the Nano Plus swaps out the half inch f2.8 sensor that you find on the Nano for a 1 over 1.28 inch f1.9 CMOS sensor. This makes the Nano Plus a better choice for nighttime and low light filming as its larger sensor allows more light in. But if you don't really plan on using this in low light, you could probably save a little bit of money and just stick with the Nano because you're getting basically the same features and same flying experience with the cheaper Nano. When it was first released, one of the really interesting things about this drone that made it stand out, especially compared to the Mini 2, was that it offered log and it also had sensors, which allowed you to take more professional videos compared to the Mini 2, but it also allowed you to fly more safely as well. I have my full review of the Mini 3 coming out soon with Make Use Of, and in that video I'll be giving you a bit more of a side-to-side -side comparison between these two drones, but there are a few notable similarities and differences that I want to highlight here. Now similar to DJI, you can either buy this in its standard or its premium bundle, which is equivalent to its Fly More bundle. The standard kit includes a total of three pairs of propellers, one battery, one charger, an RC, and an RC charging cable, as well as the RC connectivity cables, lightning, micro USB, and USB-C. Their premium bundle normally retails for $10.99, and that gives you two additional propeller pairs, two extra batteries, a battery charging hub, and a shoulder bag. And that means when DJI released their Mini 3, they were actually able to undercut the Autel Nano Plus because the Mavic Mini 3 starts at 759 with the RCN1 controller. And actually, if you have a controller from one of the previous Minis or another compatible one, you can get the drone on its own for just 669. And what's interesting, even though DJI's Fly More kit is actually a little bit more expensive at $189 for an upgrade compared to $150 if you want to get the upgrade on Autel's end. Overall, the DJI Mini 3 package with the Fly More kit is still about $150 cheaper at just $949, again, compared to $1099. And so while at regular price, the DJI is actually the cheaper drone, Autel seems to be more likely to run deeper sales, up to 22% actually which then makes this actually the cheaper drone. Currently on sale, the Nano Plus with the premium bundle is just $879, saving you about $220 compared to its full price, and it's $69 overall cheaper compared to the Mavic 3 Mini with its Fly More kit. And I think that does make the Nano Plus more appropriately priced because these do have similar specs, but this is better in low light, but overall this has better software features and you know, overall customization and pro modes. Folded up, the Nano Plus is slightly smaller. It's actually interesting, I'll point this out right now. You'll notice that you can't fold in the front arms first. You always have to do the rear ones. But you'll notice with DJI, the way it folds its arms is not inwards, but rather downwards. And it actually allows you to do it in either order. And while that isn't a big deciding factor, it does save you a little bit of time, especially when you're just trying to pack this up quickly. But the benefit, of this design and having that taller foot is that it gives the Autel a little bit more ground clearance when taking off and landing. And that's beneficial when you're not taking off from the most 
ideal of surfaces, whether that's puddles, sand and debris, it just helps keep the drone a little bit more elevated off the ground. And sticking with design, one of the other differences is with its color choices. Autel comes in a variety of colors, including this bright orange, which is pretty iconic for the brand, whereas DJI, you've only got the gray. And in addition to the orange, you also have a gray color like you do with DJI, as well as a red and a white. I do like orange because it sticks out against the sky a little bit better, so if you're trying to maintain line of sight as you're flying, it helps you keep an eye on the drone a lot more easily. Now, in terms of flying the Autel, if you have any experience coming from a DJI product, this is gonna feel very similar. They both have the same level five wind resistance, this can ascend one meter per second faster than the Mini 3, but overall in all its modes, it's three meters per second slower. Now, I don't frequently fly in sport mode, especially when I'm filming, and so in those situations, and that's usually when I'm setting up or bringing the drone back home, and that's where I did notice that this was slower compared to the Mini 3. And their Nano Plus, similar to the other Evo drones that I've reviewed with makeuseof.com, uses that very familiar Xbox One like controller. Feels very good in the hands. It's well constructed. You have this rubberized grip on the side that again helps you secure the controller in hand and they have kind of a textured top at the top of their joysticks as well which helps you keep your thumbs in place and not slip off accidentally. As far as buttons go on the controller you have your shutter slash start stop record on the left-hand side, you have a function button, which can be programmed. And then you have this dial, which by default changes your gimbal pitch. Starting from the bottom, you have your battery level indicator for the controller, not for the drone. You have the power button. Home button returns the drone either to you or wherever it took off from. And then your pause button will just pause everything in flight, which helps prevent accidental inputs on your controller. At the bottom, that's where you have your USB-C cable input, which can power and charge the controller. At the top, that's where we have our USB-C input, which in my case is connected to a lightning cable, which then connects to my iPhone. And then of course at the top, that's where you have your phone holder. So you slide your phone in there, connect to your phone. You'll have live view. You'll also have additional settings and modes that you can access via your phone's app. And then similar to other newer drones, you have removable joysticks. But the downside, and I mentioned this in a previous review, you don't have anywhere to put these on the controller themselves, so you could potentially lose these, so you do definitely need to be careful with these. Whereas with the DJI drones, you always have a little spot to store these. Now, even though both of these drones weigh about 249 grams, there are a few key differences between the battery they've managed to fit in these form factors. So with Autel, it slides on the back and as a couple other reviewers have noted, you kind of have to push the battery down in order to slide in properly. And then you have these two push release pins basically on the side here, which allows the battery to slide out. But with DJI, on the other hand, although they have the same kind of release mechanism on the side to pull the battery out, you'll notice that the bottom of the battery also acts in a way as its feet but it's also part of the bottom of the drone too. So they're able to fit a larger battery in that spot because of that design choice. Actually, something that's interesting is this is the heavier battery from Autel, although this is the larger one from DJI. With Autel, their battery is 2,250 milliamps, whereas with DJI, it's 2,453 milliamps. I usually manage to get maybe an extra five to six minutes out of DJI's drones. But there is one thing I do like about Autel's batteries, and that's that they have a battery indicator built right in to the battery. Whereas with the DJI drones, I can't see at a glance what the battery levels are. Instead on the Mini 3, it's on the drone itself. So I actually have to insert the battery and then click on the drone itself. Also, I think it's a bit of an oversight for both of these companies to not have the USB-C charging built right into the battery. And of course, the benefit would be you can charge these directly through a USB-C charger instead of needing a dedicated dock or adapter. The sensor on this isn't quite one inch, but it's nearly there. And there are a lot of side-by-side -side videos of this drone going head-to-head -head with larger ones like the Mavic Air 2S, which has a one inch sensor. And even the Mavic 3, a new big drone that has, what is that, a micro four thirds 
And in a lot of those comparisons, I think this is doing like some kind of hardware or software magic voodoo because it's low light footage is just incredible. And honestly, that's going to be the biggest selling feature of this drone. Now the Nano Plus has a slightly larger 1 over 1.2 inch sensor compared to the 1 over 1.3. This is an F1.9, this is an F1.7. And the Mini 3 also stands out because it can record videos vertically, something the Autel can't do. And just spec wise, you'd think they'd be about on par, but side by side, when I filmed in identical low light situations, this really did blow the Mavic 3 Mini out of the water. And I think the biggest surprise is how the Nano Plus is able to capture significantly more detail and produces an overall brighter image without it looking digital or overdone. In a few nighttime side-by-side -side shots of the skyline and river, the Autel Nano Plus manages to produce a much more pleasing image overall. I'm not entirely sure how they're doing it, but they manage to actually show reflections and far more detail in the river and buildings that are in the distance, whereas with the DJI Mavic Mini 3, it appears almost entirely black. These were details that I could not recover in the edit. Raw out of camera with the Autel, they are very apparent, and even tweaking it a little bit more with a slight color grade made it pop even more. And so again, if low light video is a priority of yours, this is definitely one of the biggest strengths of the Nano Plus. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows for the Autel though, because on the softer end, they're definitely kicking themselves in the butt. The Nano Plus by default looks sharper and has more contrast compared to the Mini 3, but that might not be ideal for capturing cinematic footage. The Mini 3 looks a little bit more natural to me, and it appears that the Nano Plus also has more of a purple cast to its images, especially when shooting in auto mode. I know more recent firmware updates have been working to address this, but it definitely needs more work. Both drones have a similar ISO range of 100 to 6400, and they also offer similar photo and shooting modes. Where the two drones really differ though, are in their video modes. Both can shoot 4K at 24, 25, or 30 frames per second, but the Mini 3 also offers 48 and 60 frames per second. And I especially like shooting at 4K 60 because you have the option to slow down that footage if you want to. And then speaking of slow motion, this tops out at 1080p 60 frames per second, whereas this can do 1080p 120 frames per second, which is a huge win for the Mavic Mini 3. Another area where this excels is with the video quality, especially during the day, as this can shoot at 8-bit as well as 10-bit whereas this is stuck with 8-bit. It's also stuck at 100 megabits per second, whereas this can do 150 megabits per second. This means that the Mini 3 captures more information in its recordings, which allows it to push the color grading further. You can also recover far more information from your highlights and shadows more easily before the image starts to break. Another letdown is that log and HDR footage, for whatever reason, can only be done in its auto mode. If you want to have manual or pro controls in which you're actually adjusting your shutter speed, your ISO, you can't do that in either of those two modes, which makes no sense. I'd like to think that Autel is working on an update for this, but as it stands, again, this is a letdown. These modes are significantly crippled and at times unusable, especially at nighttime because what I noticed is that this favors lowering your shutter speed. So instead of its shutter being one over 48 or one over 50, when you're shooting at 24 frames per second, it'll go down to 1 over 15 when you're shooting in log or HDR mode at nighttime because it's in auto and it's trying to prioritize letting in more light so the footage is brighter. So you're going to get a lot of motion blur and overall your footage won't look as professional even though you're shooting in these more professional profiles. I did find myself really impressed with the results you can get at nighttime, especially with HDR video, even before editing them. Provided I wasn't moving the drone too much and I kept it steady and in place, those limited settings weren't too much of an issue, but again, hopefully they are updating that with a future firmware update. The Autel Sky app has a clean interface and it provides decent customization, but it still trails compared to DJI's. I quickly found that it was rather confusing to access the manual controls, which are limited to shooting again in pro mode. I sometimes had to exit the Sky app completely and relaunch it in order for the pro settings to be accessible from the bottom. I'm someone who tends to set their settings before they take off and start recording. However, with Autel, for whatever reason, when you hit record, it sometimes resets those settings and puts them back into whatever it had as a default for auto. So you have to change your ISO, your shutter speed again, and it kind of ruins the beginning seconds of your clip. It's not a big deal, but it's a little bit weird that it does that. Now let's talk about their obstacle avoidance for just a bit. Again, they've got the front. This has the rear one right there. With DJI, it's hidden 
the top here, which is kind of interesting and kind of cool. And of course they both have their bottom sensors as well. Both are able to come to a stop when they detect an object and they won't continue flying. DJI has the ability to also intelligently move around that object and continue its flight path. Now I typically don't really trust that, but you do have the option there. With Autel, they don't even give you that option if you wanted it. But what's odd about the Autel, and I actually experienced this when flying some of their larger drones too with previous firmware updates, is that it sometimes detects objects that aren't there. I'll just be flying in place where I know there's nothing else in the sky and it'll just randomly give me errors. So you kind of lose a little bit of faith in its sensors when it starts to do that. Thankfully, it's never not detected something that it was supposed to, so at least there's that. Autel has its own version of its creative film modes, which includes rocket, fadeaway, orbit, and flick, and this automates the drone's flight to create cool video clips of your subject with just the touch of a few buttons. Their subject tracking has been improved compared to previous firmware updates, but it's still very hit or miss right now. With larger stationary objects like a nearby water tower, the Sky app was able to identify and for the most part continue to track the subject while it was taking its quick shot videos. Overall though, I would say tracking is not reliable, especially for subjects, that, whether they're people or they're moving objects. For example, even though I was stationary and it saw me, I was able to drag a box around me, it recognized me, a second later, it just disappeared. On the other hand though, and maybe this is partly because DJI's been doing it for so much longer and they probably have a bigger budget to do so, but their software overall, especially when it comes to tracking and these smart modes, just works so much better and I've really never had these issues. The Autel Evo Nano Plus finds itself in a very interesting spot. When it was first released, it had a significant edge over the DJI Mini 2, and it was the best sub 250 gram drone that you could buy. But with the recent release of the Mini 3, it now has really strong competition. The DJI has nearly identical specs, but much more feature rich software. Where the Nano Plus still manages to stand out is with its exceptional nighttime image quality, which truly could be the deciding factor when buying this drone. If Autel is able to continue to improve its firmware, they have the opportunity to really shift the balance in the drone market. So thank you for checking out our review of the Autel Evo Nano Plus. If you have any questions about it, let us know in the comments down below. Let us know what you think about these two drones and how they compare. This has been Paul with MakeUseOf.com and until the next one, we'll catch you later.